and then comes the analysis part. Okay, because this is the design we have not considered. What are the forces here? How fast you are running here? What kind of motor I need? Is it how many torques, uh, pounds I need from the motor? You know, what is the diameter of the linkage? What is the diameter of the pins? We, have, we, haven't, we haven't studied any of those issues. And this is the long part of the design. You design the machine, go through the analysis part. Analysis part basically is calculations of the forces and the moments in all these linkages and pins. Okay. Calculation of all those forces and then compare those calculated forces, pick out the maximum forces because clearly if you're looking at the force in any of these pins, it's not going to be constant. It's going to change. Something like that. And then you need to pick out the peak force. Okay. Peak force. And from the force, calculate the stress. I don't know if you know the difference between force and stress. Anybody knows the difference between force and stress? What's the difference in force and stress? Anybody? Pardon me? Anybody else? Anybody else? No? Well, the major difference is, for example, you as an engineer, if somebody asks you to design, uh, let's say, uh, 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 let's say if I have very simple machine or simple structure, uh, some kind of a plate here and I apply force here, let's say this is made of aluminum okay, and I keep loading it, keep increasing the force and let's say it breaks at uh, 10,000 pounds. Okay. Can I make this a statement? that aluminum breaks at 10,000 pounds. Why not? Because you didn't say how much aluminum you have, not all pieces Exactly. Because if I give you this piece of aluminum, it might take 50,000 pounds. Right? So, this 10,000 pounds, you cannot tell the customer you know, aluminum will break at 10,000 pounds. So that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't give me anything. You have to somehow eliminate, remove this size from the equation. Such that if I tell that aluminum breaks at this number, doesn't matter whether I'm talking about this problem or this problem, that number doesn't change. Okay. So to eliminate, if, let me give you another example. Uh, uh, let's say, how much time do I have? Uh, about 10 minutes, right? 10 more minutes left. 20. Oh, 20 minutes. Okay, good. All right. Let me give you another example. Let's say, uh, let's say uh, there is a big hill and you are going for camping and uh, there are a bunch of you, one, some are stronger, some are light, uh, not that strong and you have to carry some stuff up the hill. How are you going to divide how much each person carries? What is the common criteria that each person will have to carry? Some will carry more load, some will carry less load. How are you going to, how are you going to, what criteria are you going to use? to determine how much load each one carries. What do you think? Size or your strength? Oh, size or strength, but I, I guess what, what uh, maybe I'm not putting the question right. Uh, there has to be some common parameter that each one has to carry load such that when you reach up there, you are equally tired, right? Such that you are equally, when each one reaches up there, we are equally tired or equally stressed, okay? So the stress is more uniform parameter which applies for to everybody. You know, I don't, so basically I have removed the size requirement. Some are stronger, some are weaker. 
So I have, by defining this new thing called a stress, I have removed the size dependence. Okay, so that that's another way of looking at the stress. So what the way we uh, remove the size independence? For example, if this is the cross-sectional area, a we divide by a. So this becomes a stress. Okay, so we base our design. We so the analysis part consists of analysis part consists of calculating the forces. Okay, and again remember that two types of forces. One force is the force of the, for example, uh, uh, if uh, like the one force for, uh, for example, the machine that I we just developed. Let's say this is. Uh, some kind of platform here and this is the box and this is moving the boxes from this position to that position right so one force is as it is pushing on the boxes there will be one force like that because yeah, when you're pushing the box this box is going to push back onto you so this is the force which is uh, the box is going to push back on you. so this is one type of second force is how fast you're moving here if you're moving the boxes, this box is really fast there will be a lot more force on these pins. Okay. So this force on the pin will depend upon how fast I am moving these boxes. So somehow my equation has to contain the velocities and the motions and the acceleration. So that becomes kind of a little bit now getting into the very to the territory for which perhaps you don't have the background. But I am just giving the exam idea of that. Uh, there are two types of forces. One is the static force, for example, the force that you apply on the chair, and second type of force is the force resulting from the motion, which these are called the energy of forces. These are called the energy of forces. And many of these moving machines, energy of forces are more important than the other type of forces. Because as I gave you an example in the internal combustion engine, the mass of the piston might be very small, mass of the linkages might be very small, but because of the fact that they are moving so fast, so fast, it can produce hundreds of thousands of pounds of force, okay, just because how fast it is. And you can see, for example, if I hurl something, a piece of rock at you, it hurts because, uh, because of the inertia forces, not if you just hold the rock in your hand, it doesn't hurt, okay. Uh, <clears throat> and same thing, for example, if I take a, a pointed object, if I if I if I take this pen and push on push it onto you, it doesn't hurt here. But if, if I take a, maybe a needle and apply the same force, probably it'll hurt. Why? Because the area of the needle is very small. So you are dividing. Remember that one thousand divided by a. This a becomes very small when you take the needle. So this number becomes very large. So the stress becomes very large. So the load actually has no meaning. Because if I apply 10 pound force here, I can handle it. But if I take the needle and apply 10 pound force, I cannot handle that. Because of the stress. So the stress is more general uh, parameter, which is kind of a, doesn't depend on the size, doesn't depend on all, all those things. So that's the reason we define or we predict or we tell our customer every, all the information in terms of the stress or the strain. The strain is also similar things as, uh, as, as the stress. Okay, so this is basically the reason. So in the in the analysis part, we go calculate the forces, both the inertia forces and other types of forces, and then from those forces, uh, calculate the stresses, the stresses dividing by area. And again, this is very simplified version. It's much more complex than that. And then based on the stress, we decide, you know, because if you take any material data book, let's say you cal cal calculate this number, for, you calculate the force on each pin. And this is the peak force, and from this peak force, I calculate the stress. Okay, so this is the stress. Now, whatever number, let's say it comes up to be fifteen thousand. Okay, and then I say, okay, fine. Uh, then I say, okay, which material I'm using? Let's say I'm using a steel. Then I go to the material handbook. Okay, these exist. You can find them in the library, and they have uh, a stress versus a strain and something looks like that, okay? And then you say, okay, 15,000, let me redraw this. Let's say it looks something like that, 
and it breaks here. Let's say this number is uh, 28,000. Okay. Maximum I see in my during the operation is 15,000. It still can take 28,000. Obviously, if you're going to put some factor of safety, normally, you know, depends on the structure, you know, factor of factor of safety of two or three, and nuclear power plants have a larger factor of safety. Airplanes don't have a larger factor of safety because you want to make them lighter, right? So, so they are more risky in terms of uh, factor of safety. Anyway, so you say, okay, fine, uh, you apply. So basically, just by comparing these numbers, I can say I'm um, in the safe range. I'm in the safe range. So basically, this is the design process whereby you calculate the forces at every point in the machine. From the force, you calculate the stresses at every point in the machine. Then from the stresses, you see which material this machine is made of. Compare this number with this number. And if this number is lower than uh, this number, I really don't want to make, don't want to make that statement, but uh, uh, in fact, even if this number is lower than this number, you can still have failure. You can still have failure. Okay? And uh, in order to prove to you, without giving you any more details, let me give you this scenario. This scenario, let's say you have a road, okay, and a car is going 30 miles an hour. And you are sitting here, or the police is sitting here behind the bushes, okay. and he has this laser tracker. And let's say laser is a very primitive laser, which doesn't adjust for the direction you're shooting. Okay. Shoots here. Okay. Will he measure your speed to be if it has no adjustment for the direction? Will he measure your speed to be 30 miles an hour? less than 30 miles an hour or more than 30 miles an hour. If it has no correction for the direction. For example, there is another police sitting here. He shoots a laser in this direction. What do you think? This guy will measure more than 30 miles an hour or less than 30 miles an hour? Pardon me? Let's not worry about the whether it is putting at the tire or just let's consider this to be a point object. Or let's say forget the laser. Let's say you're looking at the car. You're looking at the car. And some let's say you have some mental program whereby you can measure the speed. Okay. Will you will this car appear to be traveling more than 30 miles an hour as seen by a person sitting here or less than 30 miles an hour or same as 30 miles an hour? Less. We all agree with that, right? What about the guy sitting here? Pardon me? 30 miles an hour. What about the guy sitting here? Less? You're smiling. Why? How will it? <laughs> how will how, how fast will it appear to be moving? It'll appear to be not moving. Oh, obviously it, it, it's going to get bigger and bigger. But as far as speed is concerned, I'll measure it to be not moving until it's obviously it's too late. Okay? <laughs> so so you can see that what I measure here depends on my reference frame. Okay. So same thing here in this problem. This, this number that I have calculated here, 15,000, this also depends on the reference frame. Okay? And here you know the road is in this direction. So the maximum speed will be read by this observer. 
But here you don't know where the road is. In this, our design scenario, the car is those points which are being stressed. And they are being stressed in all directions. Each point, if you look at under magnifying glass, and this is your structure, you look at the point, each point is being stressed in all directions. Sometimes, maybe this direction is more, maybe this direction, I don't know. So each point sees stress in all directions. And I have no idea which is the maximum. I have no idea where my observation point should be. It is possible that my observation point was this, and I measure only 15,000. If my observation point would have been here, I would have measured 48,000. Then I'm failing. Okay. So all I want to convey to you in this 15-minute uh, class is that it is much more complex than what it appears here. So in other words, you there are many unknown parameters, and we have developed technique over the years where we can find this observation point where I will see the highest stress. So once I see that, then this is the number which should be compared with this, not this. Okay? I think that's enough. Uh, I hope you got some idea about uh, the design part. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll, I'll be happy to answer those. Any how many mechanical engineers? Okay. The, as you know, the, you cannot be an engineer without a designer. Every job you're going to have to be involved with some kind of a design. Design for strength, design for stress, or any. So, engineer means you have to know fundamentals of design. Okay. So, thank you very much. Thank you.